Thank you for joining us for another episode of CryptoCurrent. Just one quick reminder. CryptoCurrent is a cryptocurrency and blockchain education platform that's bridging the gap between the curious newcomers who are just discovering the space and the thought leaders who are shaping its future. All opinions expressed by Richard Carthon, the CryptoCurrent team, and their guests on this show are exclusively their own opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed by Richard, the team, and their guests as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or to follow his financial advice. This show and any other cryptocurrency production is exclusively for informational purposes. Welcome to another episode of Cryptocurrent, your host here, Richard Carthon. And today I have a special guest with me. Uh, you might have heard his voice once or twice and, uh, you know, you've come to grow and love him. Uh, we have our COO, Steve Miller, in the house with me today. How are you doing today, Steve? I'm doing great, Rich. Beautiful day. And uh, can't wait to talk a little bit of crypto with you. Absolutely. So um, as some of you might know, uh, Steve and I are starting to a lot more different variations of content. One of the ones that you might know is the Aftershock, which Steve has been running and doing an exceptional job with. And within that segment, um, we have been doing and covering a lot of news around NFTs. Um, something that y'all also might not know is that Steve and I actually run an NFT uh, company uh, where we do uh, investing in NFT projects. So we are constantly looking at the NFT market. We are constantly finding alpha and we are constantly finding ways to get involved in various things. So we want to, of course, as we are educating you on all things crypto, to also be able to educate you uh, even more so in the world of NFTs. Um, so much so before we get into the main topic, we kind of want to tease you up on something that's coming pretty soon. Uh, Steve, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So for those that are not aware, um, we run this side fund that we call SVG Capital or Savage Capital. And the reason we went with SVG is because that is, of course, one of the you know more fun vector formats for graphics. It's our little fun play on words. And within that, we've decided that we're going to start spinning out some additional content for you that's going to be specific around NFT Alpha. So that is our little thing that we're rolling forward with. But I think today, Rich, the big topic that we want to get into is a lot more important than this little spinoff show that we're going to be doing in the future for our fans. Um, But again, we hope that you'll look forward to that and let us know what you think in the comments on this video on YouTube or let us know in a review um, if you can take the time to do that for us over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to let us know that you're looking forward to that show. Uh, But the big topic today is going to be Coinbase, right? Absolutely, man. So um, we have been waiting for this moment and the moment is, is right around the corner. And that is when there would be a competitor in the market to OpenSea. So for those who are in uh, the world of NFTs, you have probably experienced OpenSea at some point. And even if you are not, and you have looked at NFT at some point, it's a good chance that you brought up that NFT onto OpenSea. Now, Coinbase, um, which is one of the biggest exchanges as it relates to all things cryptocurrency, is out to compete. And they just launched uh, their Coinbase NFT platform. It is in beta. Now, this is huge news, especially around a ton of volume re-entering the space uh, around this project called... Uh, what, what is that, Steve? Moonbirds? You want, you want to talk about that for a second? You know, I feel like on the Aftershock, if you decide you want to go back and play back um, the biggest, longest rant on Moonbirds ever, um, you can go and learn more about Moonbirds there. But I believe that... The rollout of Coinbase NFT has been one of the more interesting but also funny things that's happened in the crypto landscape in recent memory. The big reason is is that they never wanted to cement a roadmap, right? Like they never wanted to tell us when it was coming. And I find it super ironic because they launched the thing on 420 and that kind of just lines up with them not wanting to provide any concrete details. They wanted to be as chill as possible about it. 
Right. Now, talk about good timing. Now, as we look into the world of NFTs and we look at the access that a lot of people who won, when you think about people learning about cryptocurrency in the blockchain space, last year we saw this, this turning point where everyone in the world started paying way more attention to cryptocurrency because of NFTs, because of the board eight yachts and everything else that was going on where all these people were making a ton of money selling uh, NFTs. And so people started to pay attention. So that's it's been roughly a year. So at the time of this recording, um, it is uh, late April 2022. And a lot of this craze started happening about a year ago, um, around uh, March, April of, of last year. Now, a year in, we saw a tremendous amount of volume start to go towards OpenSea. OpenSea wasn't just like OpenSea's been around for a long time, but they were not seeing a ton of traffic and volume and seeing these exorbitant amount of money. The amount of money, the amount of money that has flown into OpenSea in the last year has turned so many heads. Like uh there at one point they were doing what a, a billion dollars a month in transactions. Like they were making like yeah, that kind on, of revenue. On, on its on its own, that's an insane number. Um, the fact that they were turning that type of volume just on Coinbase alone, because I believe you're turning, you're referring to just Coinbase's volume, or are you trying to talk about open seas? No, volume? just open seas, just open seas within within the NFT market. Okay, I thought you were specifically referring to Coinbase's volume. I was like, why are you talking about Coinbase's volume? Um, but I may have just been in another in another world for a second there. Um, yeah, so Open Sea started just on an absolute tear in like October of last year, and in um, I think it was also September of last year. And they saw volume into the billions. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but we saw this current month actually trump that. So we're right now very clearly on pace to break that number for what volume has been. But this is just, in my opinion, the start. Um, we're seeing some really high quality products br- be brought out right now. Um, and the other one that I think is kind of big around the same exact month, to your point, is Bored Ape, right? Bored Ape is actually coming up right now. And we may actually end up releasing this episode on the actual day itself, um, coming up on its one-year birthday. So we are literally right at the start of like when NFTs started to go absolutely nuts. And I think the exciting part of all of this coming to fruition over the last year. NFTs are still relatively new. Crypto's very new. NFTs are even more so new um, and may, way more niche. And for the amount of people who've invested, there's been a lot more people who've been burned by NFTs than there have been people who have been successful at it. But just like trying to find ways to become successful in your own crypto investments, there is a way and strategies around how you can find projects, get into them, and then decide whether they are short-term holds, uh, mid-term holds, or even long-term holds, uh, and become very lucrative. Uh, not not just your your modern day flex, not just something cool to have, which you know that's always fun too, but to make some real money from being able to find different opportunities, and that is a lot of part of, of what Steve and I are doing now is, is being able to find some of these opportunities um, and, and try to get them to them early. And we're, we're learning a lot of lessons along the way. And uh, we're going to start sharing a lot more of that with you um, as, as, as we do this. But again, the talking point today and the, the subject that I want to bring home for y'all is, and, and the, po- the question I'm going to pose to Steven is, with Coinbase NFT beta coming out, what does this mean for the market? And what does this mean for most people who are in the who are trying to enter into the crypto NFT space? What is this going to do? So it's a really great question. Um, I think that right now with what your original question was about open seas volume, it goes to say that like, and this is kind of why my brain was tuned a little bit differently when I was answering that last question is because there's a lot of conclusions you can draw very clearly from the type of volume that you see on a platform like Coinbase, that's regularly onboarding customers and the first point of entry for a lot of people who want to come into crypto and invest. OpenSea, having been the go-to for NFTs, there's a lot of steps to get there, right? You got to do a lot. You got to onboard your money into Coinbase. You have to 
Make sure that you purchase ETH with it. You have to then set up a MetaMask. Then you have to send, you know, for the very first time out of Coinbase, your own ETH into that MetaMask. And then you have to connect the MetaMask to OpenSea. It's a process. So to me, Coinbase NFT has the opportunity to start taking away a massive chunk of OpenSea's volume immediately and then kind of multiply on it exponentially, right? We could theoretically start seeing the NFT market become a... What is that? It's a, it would be a, an eight-figure monthly um, volume play just across all the exchanges just because Coinbase NFT is coming on platform. So there's a lot of opportunity. But I think at large, what it means for the entire NFT and Web3 space is exposure to NFTs and next level content and access passes and all the things that we've come to see in the NFT space. It's going to be a lot more prevalent and it's going to be a lot more competitive in terms of pricing. But it's going to be brought to so many more people. So, so many more people have access. So quickly, and, and, and to, to add on to that, when you talk about an easy onboarding and all the steps that Stephen just said, right, you have to create a Coinbase account, buy ETH, send ETH to MetaMask, go to OpenSea, buy a thing, do all this stuff. So it takes a little bit of... Uh, you have to be a little intuitive to, to do it. Now you're telling me, I go on this platform, Coinbase, I flip over to the NFT tab, I find an NFT that I want, and then I can buy it with my credit card. Or I can buy it with my debit card or my bank account, whatever it is. And then it then sits on Coinbase as well. Like you talk about how much easier of access and use and exposure this is going to bring to people who want to get involved and want to be able to potentially do it themselves. And now they can. This is giving that ability. This is making it uh, an option and, and making it viable, which is really cool. But to, to pose it another way to go a little bit deeper into this, Steve, the reason why I think it might not just overtake it as quickly as possible. It's because you might not initially get everyone. So right now, one of the things within NFT space is taxes and the, the, the gains that you potentially make or even the losses. Like how do you even document all of this to be able to effectively do it? Now, going through OpenSea, uh, it's a little bit harder to go from ETH to NFT back to ETH send it back and all that and then try to like rectify it or reconcile or whatever. However, on Coinbase, that will be very easy because you can follow the money the entire time. I think that that is going to, for your undocs and people who are trying to fly under the radar of being in the NFT space, that might keep some people weary from wanting to go in that direction, which would still be an appealing way for people via OpenSea to go that route. So I'd but for the greater like good of I don't want to say the greater good, but like for the the mass adoption and, and mass amount of people that are just trying to enter the space for the first time, I don't see that as an issue at all. I don't think they're gonna know any better or care for that matter. But it does bring up an easier way now that if the IRS or whomever entity wants us to be like, hey, we saw you bought this NFT for this price, we see you sold it for this, we're gonna call this capital gains on you, we need you to report this, it's gonna make that a lot easier. I would agree. I think that the one thing that really stands out to me is when we talk about these new users and the people that are coming into Web3 right now, very first time, I think they're amongst a group of individuals that does not care about their privacy. Because the vast majority of the people that really, really care about KYC, that don't want it, they're already here. Yep. They've been here. They're the crypto OGs. They've been around forever. And they're not going anywhere. They're staying in this world. But for those people coming in, they're very used to it. They've been investing with Fidelity and Merrill Lynch and um, you know Goldman Sachs for years. So they're well aware of the fact that their stuff is on the government's books to begin with. But what I think is a lot more significant right now is the fact that you look at open... like To put this into context for you, Coinbase NFT is a platform immediately opens the door to... I'm, I'm not kidding on this. I looked it up. It's an accurate number as of this past year. 11.4 million monthly users. Okay? Yep. What is the current number for OpenSea's active monthly users? 
Take a guess. I'm going on a, going on a guess and put like 200,000. 500,000. And that, wow. that was the average for last year. So to me, the insane amount of upside in the amount of capital that then becomes available to the NFT market, but also seems a lot more friendly to invest in than that of DeFi or into other uh, currencies. Like, you know, pick, pick your favorite token, right? There is personality, there is spirit to the NFT landscape and the metaverse that you don't get out of just buying the RC20 token or buying Cardano or buying Solana. You can get a lot more out of that experience and they're really making sure that they deliver on that through Coinbase NFT. Coinbase NFT, if you go onto the platform and just play around with it, it's really clear that they're really not even focused at this point on providing an exchange or a transaction set where you can go and buy NFTs. They're way more concerned about providing a social experience. So they want it to become the official social trading platform of the NFT world and of the metaverse. I think that's really interesting. It is. And just just on that alone, right? When you're going from 500,000 monthly to 11. So let's just call that a friendly, what, 22x? It's pretty, pretty insane. Um, and just goes to the sheer amount of why I think you and I are very bullish on where the NFT space is headed and the amount of money and flow that's going to impact. And with a lot of these NFTs being built on Ethereum right now, the price implications that could also mean for Ethereum coming up pretty soon, which of course, as Ethereum does well, alt season typically happens. And who doesn't love a good alt season? So it, it's all these things that build on top of each other and points to... Front, like When I look at the fundamentals of the market right now, so for all the newbies out there who don't necessarily understand like different types of like strategies you look at, fundamentals are like what's happening in the world? What, what's the news? What's going on in the news cycles? And what are people talking about? Um, things that you can like look at, observe, and then try to deduct things that could happen based on what's what that is. So the fundamentals are the strongest in crypto and NFTs that I've ever seen them in since since existence of of cryptocurrency. So I, I am super excited and bullish on that. But then you look at where the market has been. We have been on a downward trend for almost five months now, and there's been a lot of consolidation. And so if, if we're potentially bottoming out right now, we could, we could be headed towards a very, very exciting summer. Um, and another reason, another great time for, for all those who are listening, if, you're, if you are already in crypto and you're learning your stuff, great. And if you've always been interested and curious about NFTs, now could be a really good time to start to research that a little bit more and get involved uh, and, and try to get into some of these projects early because there are going to be some absolute gems a year from now you wish you got into. Prime example, a year ago, you could have got into Board 8 Yacht Club for a couple of ETH. And now the floor is 100 ETH. Above. And you would have, huh? oh, above 100 ETH. You would have got airdropped a mutant ape, which is, I think the floor on that is what? 30 ETH. 30 ETH. So, you know, just another quick $100,000. Um, and then you got airdropped. ApeCoin, which I think at the time when it dropped, and if you held on to it, probably would have been an additional 20k. So, yes, those were these the, the, the residual income and the passive income that comes from holding a really good NFT project. They are kind of outperforming some of these regular crypto projects. When you look at the build-up application over the course of a year, if you get into the right projects, so the whole point of this is that NFTs are really awesome, amazing investment opportunity, but you can get burned. Just like in regular crypto, you have to know what you're looking for. You have to know how to research. You know, have to know how to get involved early. Um, and what's great is that Steve and I plan on helping you do that. Yeah, the very last thing that we want to do is see you jump into a world like NFTs or the metaverse and get kicked. Because the, the truth is, is that it takes a lot of failure in type of space in order to start to understand it. You know, it even for even those that understand it, you still take a number of L's. Okay? It's really like very simple to understand. But when I look at this world versus the standard ERC20 world, I see it as the big differentiating factor being culture. This is modern culture that these specific properties are influencing and also coming from. Tokens, ERC20s, like your super farms, 
your engine coins, all of that stuff, even you know ecosystem tokens like mana for Decentraland, all of those tokens, they're financial instruments. They're used to support the economies within those ecosystems. An NFT has the potential to be IP. It has the potential to be an access token to get you into an event like VCon that's coming up. There's so much that can be done with NFTs. They were just scratching the surface of it. But what you were saying about the expansion of it and how it can amount to so much more, we're also just starting to see the actual significance of that. I can immediately spin up two other things that came off of Board Ape that you didn't mention that was additional added value in Kennel Club. And yep. then also now access to um, Board Ape Land in Other Side, which is coming up this week. Yep. And exclusive parties. They had an exclusive party in New York yep. where if you owned one, you literally could go on a yacht party for free. Yep. yep. They have, and they have their entire event week coming up in June again right before NFT NYC. So that, and that's just the board ape ecosystem. Looking for projects that do that sort of thing, that's good meta to be following. You want to be looking for projects that are consistently giving back more value to their ecosystem. If you're investing in a project and you don't see that, and you just see baseless claim or just a roadmap that they're not delivering on, that's not a project you want to be in. I see another big project, again, give the Moonbirds example, right? Proof, which was a pass initially, has been adding value back to their user base by delivering on new products. So that, was, that initial launch was only made available to 1,000 users. Okay, So to buy a Proof Pass, it was a Dutch auction, went down to one ETH. So you had a bunch of people, 1,000 plus, sorry, not 1,000 plus, 1,000 to 750 people, because some of them could have bought more than one, right? Buying these proof passes. Before the Moonbirds launch, it got up to 90 ETH per pass. Okay? But it only gets there by seeing the team deliver more value back to the ecosystem. So they rolled out a, pro a program called Grails. And Grails basically up was a platform where those proof pass holders could get access to exclusive art drops that were essentially brought in by partner artists that the people behind Proof partnered with. So for example, some of the biggest names in generative art were featured on Grails. You have Tyler Hobbs, who is the artist behind Fidenza. Um, you have um, Dimitri... I always blow this guy's last name. The artist behind Ringers. Okay, Massive names coming in to do exclusive art drops. So all those people are starting to gain more value back by owning a proof pass. So that in and of itself is utility. If you can find projects that are adding utility or adding value or continuing to give back and reinvest in a community, those are the projects that are going to last. Those are the products that are going to be actually expanding in value upwards and have a higher upside long term. That's what I will look out for, along with some other little bits and pieces that we'll get into more in that new show, of, of course. So I know we've been teasing this up and I know we've covered a lot of different things within as it relates to NFTs. We're going to keep this one uh, shorter and sweet. But the point being is that the NFT space is absolutely a space that if you are in the crypto blockchain ecosystem, it's something worth paying attention to. And it's something worth educating yourself in right now. It's super early. There is a lot of opportunity of growth and other things that you can get involved in. And people are going to want to learn more about this and they're going to look for thought leaders in this. And if you can learn how to be able to speak to these things, find these products, get in early, etc. It's just going to allow you to have more opportunities in this particular landscape because man, there's, there's not a lot of what you would quote unquote call um, an NFT guru or expert or, or whatever. And, there's, and, and being able to have an eye for this and be able to understand community and everything else, there are... Just there's just so much upside to it, and it, all it takes is time, effort, and energy. It takes time, effort, energy. Yes, some money to be able to get into some of these projects, but you use some of that initial investment, get a couple good wins, and then you can keep leveling up on top of it. But just to get started, most of it is time, effort, energy. So spend a little bit of that uh, if you're if you're looking to spend some of that energy, time, and effort 
to learn a little bit more, keep on checking out our content and be on the lookout for uh, the new content we're going to be dropping soon, NFT specific um, as well. Uh, Steve, thank you for joining. Any final words that you have for these amazing people listening today? Only other final word that I've got for you is if you want more live content from us in terms of NFT and metaverse related content where we have conversations about what's going on in this space live, we do a Twitter space every single Thursday through the Cryptocurrent Twitter account um, that we would love it if you would come out and join us for. It's called Non-Fungible Thursdays. It's always at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And I host that with our good friend Rico or Rico Shea. He's a rapper in the space that loves to talk about the news and what's going on. And he's all about the alpha himself. So come on over there, join us for those conversations. But otherwise, look forward to these alpha shows coming up, as well as a whole bunch more great interviews and content from us here at Cryptocurrent. Excellent. Well, uh, you heard it from Steve. Make sure you go check us out there. Um, A lot of other amazing things um, on the way. Uh, Be on the lookout for them. And of course, for every listening, stay Cryptocurrent.